Hi, I hope you've had a good week and thanks for joining me again. This week, I want to talk about something that's really important to get right from the very beginning when you have an electronic drum kit. And it doesn't matter which make, model, brand you are using, it's always the same. Elise's, Roland, Yamaha, Two Box, D Drum, they're all the same when it comes to this. And that is the parameter settings. When you get an acoustic drum kit, you tune it and you play with the skins so that they respond to your touch and your feel. You have to do the same with electronics and that's done within these parameters. If not, then you're at a disadvantage straight away. You're playing a kit that you're not comfortable with. And I hear so many players, especially way back when electronic drums were first kind of like coming onto the scene, players would turn around and say, oh, they don't feel like acoustic drums. Um, and I'd think, well, no, they're, they're not acoustic drums. These, these instruments are different. You're not playing a, a, an, an acoustic kit. You're playing an electronic kit. It's going to feel different. But you can set that up. There are parameters within the module that allow you to set it up so it's comfortable to your touch. Some have more parameters than others. You can go really in depth with the more advanced modules such as the TD50, the, the Yamaha DTX900. You can really get stuck into what's going on. However, even the low end kits have some degree of manipulation. You know, so we're gonna look at some of those today. The first one, top of the list, everybody knows it, sensitivity. I'm amazed at the number of people on forums that say sensitivity is the reason for mistriggering and crosstalk. It isn't. Sensitivity is the volume at which your touch comes out the speakers at. So the higher the sensitivity, the louder your touch is going to be. Let me demonstrate. So here, my sensitivity at the moment on this is down to 10. I'm going to bring it down to zero. It means the slightest touch it's quiet. But let's see what happens if I bring that sensitivity up to the maximum. So it's now up to 126. The same touch. Look how loud that is. So what you want to do is find the balance. Find that point which is quiet enough for you and loud enough for you. You don't want to use it as a volume though. This is purely for your touch. How the volume is in relation to the touch of your drum. So the next one is threshold. Threshold is the activation of the drum as you tap it. If it's set too high, as I demonstrate here, when you tap the drum, it's not going to activate. It's not registering a hit because the threshold is too high. You have to hit at a certain velocity over the threshold for it to activate. However, if it's set too low, the slightest touch, the slightest touch is going to make it activate. And it's going to be activated to whatever your sensitivity setting is. So if your sensitivity setting is set really high, the slightest touch is going to be loud. But if you bring your threshold up, the slightest touch isn't even going to register. So it's messing with these two parameters that are gonna make the pad, once again, even better and more responsive to how you play. The next one I wanna look at is crosstalk. This is when pads are being triggered because of vibrations or crosstalk from other pads. Meaning as I'm hitting the snare drum, it's triggering a tom. The tom is triggering a ride cymbal. The ride cymbal is triggering a crash. And this could be happening due to pads being mounted on the same stand. The vibration is going to travel through the stand and cause the other pad to vibrate. Maybe because the threshold is set too low. Maybe because of the crosstalk. Now with some modules, the more you get into them, you have much more possibilities available to you. There are some modules that have the mask time, for instance. Mask time is when you hit a drum, if you're, sometimes if you're doubling and you don't want to, for whatever reason, you have mask time. A mask time will mask that set second hit. And what that does is it allows you to set a, a time, normally milliseconds, which will stop that trigger from triggering again. Again, with the uh, DTX, uh, it's, it's described as reject time. 
So the vocabulary that's used with certain modules might be different, but the function is exactly the same. You need to make sure you understand what the vocabulary is for your, for your module. It happens a lot with acoustic triggers. If you have an acoustic trigger, as you hit the drum, as the skin vibrates, that vibration can make the trigger trigger again. Another thing you need to look at is the velocity curve. This is going to either boost or limit the velocity that you hit the, the pad with. And it's already a pre-programmed map, which helps with the dynamic response of the sound that you're playing. I find it really handy to really add to the feel of the, uh, of the kit when I'm playing it, especially as an acoustic kit. It's a really good thing to get into. And by using these pre-map parameters, you'll be able to get the kit to feel a lot more like an acoustic kit to the way you play. Once all these parameters are, are tweaked and played with, you can get your kit to respond and be so much more comfortable for you to play. But more importantly, the more you go down the road of electronic drumming and start incorporating other things that these instruments can do, triggering loops, triggering samples, musical phrases, vocals, lighting systems, video screens, etc., etc., the parameters and the settings of those parameters become really important. Really important because you need to know how to set them and also assign them to kits if your module allows. So that when you dial a kit up, also that trigger setup will be dialed up with it. If you're using loops, for instance, you need to make sure those loops are always being triggered at the same velocity. You don't want one loop at one volume and another loop at another volume, especially if they're supposed to be of an even uh, of, an, of an even volume coming out of the speakers. If you're using your eardrums um, in an acoustic environment, your approach to playing jazz, your touch is going to be much lighter to it is playing rock, I would imagine. You can have trigger setups for your rock setup and a trigger setup for your jazz setup. By dialing those kits up, those trigger setups are going to be there for you. So by experimenting and messing around with these uh, th these uh, settings and these values, you really can get your kit to feel really beautiful to you, really comfortable for your playing as well. It's really important and it's something that is overlooked by so many drummers. I think it's one of the most important things on an electronic drum kit when you first get it. Get it set up so you're comfortable playing it, the same as you would with an acoustic kit. So there you go. I hope you've got something out of this. Thanks for watching. Um, if you've got any questions, send them over. Don't forget. I'm more than happy to, uh, to answer and shed some light on some of those. How the f do I do that? In the meantime, if you've enjoyed this, hit the like button. Um, head over to YouTube to bid111. Um, loads more videos over there. And don't forget, I've got a book coming out which tells you all about this stuff and more. It's over at tugted.com. Shoot on over there. Leave your details, your email address, and you'll get notified on its release, which is imminent. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.